here once again on this uh, episode of uh, Fine. Uh, before we go further, uh, Lord, we thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for the ability to meet together even when we are apart. We thank you that you have allowed us to independence and I thank you for every member of the fire family wherever they may be around the world whether they're watching us live or those will be watching us later I thank you for all of them so be with us for the next one hour um, as we discuss in Jesus name we pray amen and amen so karibuni sana it's um, a great joy today is is, um, is, a, is a good day for me um, I think I woke up at around uh, four, as I usually do, and I saw a message from my mom, and she said that I was uh, 16,801 days. I was like, okay, oh, I think only a mother can do such uh, mathematics. So I'm 46 years old today, so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited and uh, really, really grateful to God. So Karibuni Sana, today we are going to talk about um, financial independence number. And the question is, what is your financial independence number? So remember, I'll do, I'll do a small intro, maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes. And then hopefully after that, we can begin to engage. These things get really exciting when we begin to engage. And I'll be really happy to, to uh, engage with your questions. Uh, we have a new set today. Uh, this is a new office. It's called um, the Fire Council. This is where we create financial independence right here. It's not complete yet but it will be in a, in a few weeks, so we are really, really happy. So what is your financial independence number? Maybe before we go too far, let me define what that is. So we have defined financial independence before as having assets that generate for you sufficient income to meet your needs, your wants, and your desires. Now, that sufficient income cannot be arbitrary. That sufficient income that enables you to meet your needs, your wants, and your desires, that is a financial independence number. So it must be clear. It must be a number. And this is not, not just um, sufficient income, sufficient monthly income. It has to be monthly. Sufficient monthly income. That is your financial independence number. And we are not talking about net worth because net worth can be can be a bit arbitrary sometimes, yeah. Because you can own a lot of things that you don't generate for you cash flow. So this whole thing is about cash flow. So what is that number that you're looking for? What is that number that you must work at and target? It must be a target. What is that number that frees you to pursue your purpose in life? What is that number that once you reach that monthly income, and it's not salary, it's not active. This is passive monthly income. It must be passive. It is income that you're getting from your investment. What is that number that the day you reach, you can sit down and ask yourself, why do I need to go to work today? Because from that time, you don't need to work for a salary anymore. Now, there's a group I belong to um, called, we call it the Proverbs Men, and um, some amazing, amazing gentlemen. Um, and one of them, a pastor friend of mine, um, I think yesterday we were discussing, today is 31st, so yesterday was 30th, and we were discussing there was something about, um, Lord, give me what is enough, don't make me too rich that I may boast, and don't give me too little so that I don't, um, I don't steal, Yeah. And he, he, he talked about the financial independence number. And I thought, hmm, what a coincidence. I was planning to talk about this. And his definition was very interesting. What is that number that if you reach, you can afford to give the rest to other people? That this is the amount I'm looking for. Anything over and above that, I can afford to be a philanthropist and just give it all away because all my needs have been met. I, thought, I found that to be a very interesting definition of the financial independence number. So that's what a financial independence number is. The specific number, the specific passive monthly cash flow 
that you must target to meet to meet um, to meet your needs your wants and your desires the number that allows you to achieve and pursue your purpose the number that if you got you don't have to go to work the number that if you reached you you can give away anything extra that you get okay so you can define it in in, in any one of those ways and um, to explain this better I think, as usual, I will just use um, my example. I think that's the thing that I know. I, I know best. I, I'm not. I don't know too many theories, but I know my life. So let me just take you back. You know, rewind to um, 1998. That's when I I, I met my wife. Um, for some reason, in the entire university, she decided to come and sit at my desk. I mean, what are the odds? Yeah, so I came, I saw this beautiful woman sitting at my desk. She was, I think, a 19-year-old girl then. Um, and, well, one little thing led to the next, and she became my wife. And um, as we were dating and we were in college, a friend of mine, one of my best friends, we've been friends since 1985, gave me a very interesting notion. And he told me, Mcharo, you know, we are finishing school now, and then you will start working. Now, as you work, don't, um, you know, when it comes to your finances, start with the end. So this is a guy called Jeffrey Njogu. Jeffrey Njogu, I was with him, same primary school, same high school, same university, and your friends to date. So he says, don't start now, start at the end. Start with the retirement, and then come to college fees, and then come to high school fees in terms of your investment. Think, think in those terms, yeah? So you must do retirement first, with your first job. No, so, okay, that's, that's a very peculiar way of looking at life. But that's, that thought never left my mind. Of course, I didn't, I didn't implement it immediately. Uh, the first couple of, of years, really, was just trying to survive, just trying to stay alive. But um, when we began our journey uh, to financial independence in 2004, um, I think I was 29, going on 30. My wife was, uh, was 25 at that time. So as we are starting that journey, Jeff's thing came to mind that we are not only investing, but we must invest for retirement. But the trick was if, because we didn't know how much you would need for retirement, but Jeff had given me a very interesting concept. He says, if you can save, if you can generate sufficient monthly cash flow to meet the children's college fees, then that college fees, once they're done with college, is the time that we'll be retiring, that same amount can be turned into your retirement fund. I was like, brilliant. So where do I want my kids to go to college? That time, I think uh, my firstborn was, um, I think he was like three years. Um, and then my secondborn was a few months old. Yeah, about four or five months. And we said, okay, we think we would like our kids to go to any university they want to choose in the world. So say Harvard. At that time, I think Harvard was charging six million a year. Um, remember, my salary at that time was slightly over 15K, yeah, slightly over 15,000 shillings. And here we are, we want to generate income that will give us 6 million a year. It doesn't make sense. But that was the number. So 6 million a year divided by 12 equals 500,000 shillings. Boom. That was the number. And that became our North Star. That became the guiding principle. That became the focal point, and we, were, we never changed from that number. We just held on to that number, okay? So I'm 29, my wife is 24, my friend Jeff has given me wisdom, and we have a number, 500,000 per month. You know, dreams are free. Dreams are free, but this one was so ridiculous, we couldn't share with our friends openly. Because you see, someone will ask you, okay, how much are you making, 15K, and you want to get uh, half a million in passive income, how yeah it, does, it doesn't make sense but we started and so we are here 2004 and we thought to just draw a line poop to 2019 that 2004 15 years later 2019 will have reached our half a million so we thought every year we'll be getting a little increment and a little increment but the graph of life is never that way the graph the graph of life is just ups and downs and ups and downs and it was difficult it was not until year seven, I think I was five, 36, 
that now things began to sort of look up. But what began as a very sad story of working, pushing, um, trying to get investments in place, being the brokest, the most broke of all our friends who are, guess what, broke the most. All that began to build something in us before the money came. It began to build character. It began to ensure that my wife and I were talking a little more about, uh, I mean, just talking a little more and talking a little more because most of our, um, most of our conversations were about money. But, but we, we got talking, we got talking about that. And um, I think by the time I was about 40, 41, because the graph starts this way, but after a while it begins to peak. Still with ups and downs, but it, but it sort of begins to peak. By the time I was about 40, 41, we were now closing in on that number. But as we were closing in on that number, we had loans. I think I've, I've mentioned in these sessions before that my wife moved from where she was working to go and work in a bank, yeah? So, so that we were able to get uh, cheaper loans, but we had loans. And um, I think about three years ago, three, three, four years ago, I can't remember, um, her bank job ended and the interest moved from, I think 5% and shot to 18%. And I think I've shared this story before, we just pushed and pushed and pushed and every penny that we got, we were able to clear those loans. So about three years ago, when I was about, I think 43, um, we were able to reach that number. And, and that was a great relief. And on reaching that number, now we can dream. We could now get off our, our safe zones, yeah? I had already, when I, when I was seeing you were closing in on the number, I already left the other company that I was with. I began Savo and we began working on this business model. Three years ago, once we had reached the number and surpassed it, and once um, we had paid off all our loans, my wife could leave her bank job and come and join me. And here we are building this thing. So that's our story in a nutshell. That as crazy as it may be, if you have a target and a focus, then you get the impetus to have relenting effort. Now, <laughs> I, I, must, I must add this. Um, it's not just the dream. When I was young, I, I, I went to um, some, I had a preacher, I can't remember who he was. And I think the girl's right, he says, long after you have forgotten who I am, please remember this. It's very interesting, eh? And I actually remember, he says, the greatness of a man is determined by the cause he lives for and the price he's willing to pay to achieve that cause. So for us, it was 500 Gs a month. That was the cause we were living for. But the more important thing is what price were, willing, were we willing to pay to achieve that cause? So same for you. What, what's your number? And the number does not have to be related to what you're earning today. Yeah, and that number, don't try and, and achieve it in the next four or five years. No, 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 give yourself 15 years. We, we, we were taught to give ourselves about 15 years. But more importantly, what are you willing to pay? What are you willing to invest? How much effort, how much work, how much investment, how much knowledge, how much learning, how much relentlessness are you willing to put to be able to achieve that number? So that's my story. That's my story. That's our story. I think if you ask my wife, she'll give you the same, the same story. She'll have a different, uh, a different flavor to it. And I'm, and I'm happy to begin to engage. I'm happy to begin to engage to, to see. I can see questions are already coming. Um, Gerald Karibu, uh, happy to be here. Uh, Lea, Lea, happy birthday, my son, Leonard. Lea, Lea, that's my mom. She has, she has a fancy name on, uh, on, uh, on YouTube. Um, Evans Musomi. Really interesting, uh, basing the number on kids university. Was that inclusive of two kids attending Harvard? And how did you factor for appreciation? Ha, very, very nice, uh, Evans. No, we, we uh, two kids would have been 12 million. It would have been a bit out of the ordinary. So we said, if you could sort out one, by the time the guy gets in, when he's in third year, then his brother will be joining. By then, you'll have figured something out. Yeah, so I think uh, that's how it was. Number two, did we factor in for inflation, 
No, because it was 15 years. So I think the beauty of um, a long-term plan is that you can afford to just get one. You don't have to be super accurate. Yeah. So why university fees? Because we felt that was um, that would have been the, the biggest expense that we had. Uh, did you factor in for inflation? No, we just chose the number. Now, let me give you a secret. <laughs> my son, my firstborn son is in a local university. I do not pay that amount. Of, I do not pay even a small fraction of that. So that's one of the beautiful things. Yeah, that the guy is um, at the end of Harvard, he's right here, and, um, and I'm able to afford his fees. Yeah. So if I got my monthly rent, I can probably sort out two terms. Um, and then two months I've sorted out my that guy's fees, chop chop. Yeah, so it was not too perfect, but we just focused on it like there was no other number. We focused on it like it was the only truth um, that we had. Okay, um, I hope I've answered that well. Um, billionaire Brian Masharia, I like the way you put your name, billionaire. He's, he's an heir to billions. Yeah, uh, Brian Masharia, very important topic. Can't wait to learn about uh, financial independence. Karibu sana. Uh, Brian, again, you come. My financial independence number is 300K per month and should come from at least five streams of income. Yeah. Brian's billionaire, billionaire, you know, one wonderful name. He says his number is 500K, uh, 300,000 shillings, and it should come from five sources, five income streams. And it will be very interesting to just understand what these, um, what these streams are for you. Uh, you put something else here. Hi, teacher Mcharo, <laughs> teacher prof, related to Yote Nakubali. Tell us the difference between financial security and financial independence. Um, my guys, I think these things are kidogo. The, 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 the things are overlapping. Um, okay. What is financial security? I think financial security is having something, having some money, you know, um, having some savings or a little income here and there that if you lost your job today or if you retired, then you will not be completely destitute. But it is not enough. And many times people... The danger of financial security, because I think it's not very well defined, that if I have a home, um, I have a few cows, I have um, um, something, a piece of land somewhere, I, at least I get some little money. You can be tricked into having psychological security. That's a big trick, like home ownership, or just owning a piece of land that is not generating income. That is dangerous. Financial independence, is that you don't need any other source of income to meet your needs, wants, and desires. Now we can talk about the different levels. There's like entry level, mid level, luxurious level, whichever. But as long as you're able to live your life without the need for a salary, without the need for active income, and salary could be whether from a job or from business. Yeah. So that's how I see uh, the the um, the difference. Um, very quickly about um. Uh, Brian's uh, five sources of income. I have many income streams. For me, each apartment is an income stream. I have many income streams, but all my income streams are in one industry. All of them are from real estate. Why? Because I understand it. Yeah, I understand it and it works well for me. So I know the idea of having many income streams has come up, but I want to warn that make sure that you understand all the when you're younger and when you're starting of course we had many we had my job my wife's job our investments you know all those things um, all those were income streams but as you begin to invest you want to begin to hone in in an area it could be one thing or a group of things that you really really understand okay uh wonderful um nguhi muturi karibu sana i love that plan huge Live small, also say a uh, nice one. Also to say nice one. I love that plan. Uh, live small, also to say nice one. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand this one. Ebu, Ebu clarify for me when, uh, when I'm here, I understand it better. Okay. Gerald, I love how you said you learn something through the journey, like patience, 
communication with your wife. <clears throat> Let me talk about that a bit. Financial independence is not just about money. You will realize when you start, you start because it's money. See, let me delay the gratification day so that I'm able to save tomorrow. You know, I'm able to live a better life tomorrow. But then the fruit of the financial independence journey is so much, and money is just one of them. After a while, the beginning is only money, but as you move on, you realize money comes way lower on the list. I mean, just having a solid marriage. Remember, I'm a man with many weaknesses and arrogance and, and problems. But because of this journey, I learned to listen. I learned to say, I'm sorry. When I, when I mistake again, I can go to my wife and apologize and she can forgive me. Because even in the journey, I let her control all the cash. Story for men. If you can develop a relationship with your wife in a way that you are able to allow her and give her the capacity to control all the money. By the way, maisha yako itakuwa tu mzuri sana. Utasamehewa makosa mengi na it will be better. Because money is one of the big places for fights. Yeah, but this journey has taught me humility. It has taught us very, very many things. So I hope I've, um, I've, I've captured that. Okay, guys, the, the comments have disappeared. Are they there? Uh, wonderful. Um, would I be right to assume I am financially secure when I'm able to pay my bills and save a little, but from salary? Now, remember, financial independence is all about passive cash flow. Passive. The one that you get when you are asleep. The one that you get when you are um, at the beach. The one that you get when you are doing things for passion. Yeah. So for as long as it depends on your salary, for as long as it depends on you, it's not independence. Because we've, we've mentioned that um, money is a wonderful slave. Wonderful. It works 24-7. But a terrible master. Because if you're working for money, then you have, to, you have to work. So if you are able to earn a salary, that's not independence. That is your seed. Use the salary, that little that you're able to save. In fact, I would say change. Get your money, pay yourself first. That's one of the tricks of achieving financial independence. Pay yourself first. Before you pay your landlord, I'm a landlord. So before you pay me, pay yourself first. Before you go and pay the owner of the mall, Pay yourself first. Before you pay the owner, pay yourself first. And what is paying yourself first? Taking the money and saving it to build enough to start investing. Don't save for it to sit in the bank. Save for it to, to grow, then investing. So for me, for me and my family, me and my house, we pay ourselves first every day. We have done that ever since, from the very beginning. Okay? Um, I'm only seeing YouTube there. Is. I must, I must be. Oh, by the way, guys, please comment and uh, and share. I'm, I'm, I'm probably the worst, the worst social media guy. I talk to my crew as we are talking to you guys. I'm trying to be refined, but uh, hey, um, forgive me as I am. Okay. Um, any other thing that I'm seeing here? Or Ted GT, Ted GT. Great talk, Mr. Mcharo. I was your student in 06 to 08. Hey, but I'm with you. This guy was my student in 06, 08. Yeah. Um, and your lectures really resonated with me back then. Is it wise to spread yourself thin on many income streams or to concentrate on a single venture? Ted GT, I don't know what name you used then. I, or maybe you could, I, hopefully I can see your face at some point and I'll, then, then I'll remember. So this is a guy I taught um, what, 12, 14 to 12, 14 years ago. Um, is it wise to spread yourself thin or to concentrate? I am all for concentration. 
I know very many financial advisors will not um, agree with me, but I'm all for concentration. Why? Why am I all for concentration? Because we are not talking about speculation. Fin financial independence or investments is not something, we, we don't learn it in school, but you require knowledge. So you need time, you need space, you need, I mean, time to devote to it and a long period of time to devote onto that issue for you to become an expert in it. Knowing what to do is easy, but many times you can be lucky. Knowing what not to do, that is the hard part. Now you can imagine, and I think last week I, I talked about my, my dumb money moves. And that's the time when I'm doing real estate. I tried cattle, I tried greenhouses, I tried, I don't know, doing boreholes. Come on. I could not have the capacity to deal with all these things. So learn to concentrate on one thing. And this one thing I shared last week, and maybe let me just repeat it here, because not having it, not having that thing will mess you up. You must have four things. I think it's what I ended up with last week. Four things. Number one, does the world need it? Invest only in something that the world needs. Don't chase money in your investments. It's not about income streams. It is problems. Which problem can you best understand and best solve? So does the world need it? Number two, could you be the best in the world at it? Now, you cannot possibly be the best in the world at very many things. Go to the internet and look at great investors, again, like Charlie Manga. Yeah, Charlie Manga is Warren Buffett's partner. Look at his portfolio. I think he has like five things. Yeah, Warren Buffett in his Berkshire Hathaway, half, half of Berkshire Hathaway is in one company, Apple. So once you have understood your thing, you know the world needs it and can be really good at it. Number three, do you understand the economic engine? I understand the economic engine in, out. I understand how to make money from it and I understand how I can lose money from it. And am I passionate about it? Don't devote 15 years of your life trying to just create money. If you're going to spend 15 years of your life doing anything, do something that you really love. Yeah, And when you love it and you're good at it and you understand the economics and the world needs it, boom, you make money. So don't be obsessed with increasing the streams. Be obsessed with understanding your stream. Okay, um, where else can I check? Uh, Arnold, Arnold Kokonya is saving in a circle wiser than saving in a bank. From my experience, when I used to save, yes. Yes. I was introduced to a circle, I was at the university, so I was introduced to a, a circle called Chuna. Yeah. And my wife was working for another company and she was introduced to a circle called Sheloise. Yeah. So the guy who introduced me to Chuna was a messenger at the university. And he came and told me, hey, Kijana, I'm lecture to go to the university. Then you don't save. You will drink all that money. And he took me to Chuna and introduced me to Chuna. Yeah. Chuna, Chuna is like, um, like kama kuna tunda unali Chuna. So I went and I saved. And when you're saying, I was, when we started selling, I was saving with Chuna. And I have no shame mentioning that brand. And my wife, she had saved with Sheloise. It was her, the company she was working with. Um, it was Kenya Shell then. Now it has a different name. And she saved in Sheloise. And both of us were able to borrow a million. It took me about 20 months, I think 20 months, to be able to borrow my first million from that. I remember it was 1,60s, 1,30, 30s, dot, two zeros. It was the most exciting piece of paper I had ever seen in my life. Even the girls of Chuna were so excited. They were like, young man, you are so young. I was in my early 30s. You are so young and you're coming to borrow such money, not because you're going to pay fees. Don't see emergency, invest. They process that loan, the secretary, remember? And the guy in charge, they process that thing quick. When I went to the bank, I realized the problem with the check. So I had to come back with it. 
and they just told me sit down there and they rectified it and I went and I got it. So yes, for anybody who is starting out, I would always say go for a circle. Yeah, go for a circle. Because another thing I think it teaches you, you have to develop a relationship with someone else and you can't borrow what you don't have. These things of uh, going borrow 105%, don't do such a thing. If you're going to borrow 200, you must plant a seed because that teaches you the, 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 um, the discipline that I have to learn to live on less than I earn. Yeah, so a circle is great that way. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Nipateni uh, Jawani? Yeah. Um, no, no, Facebook and Instagram, I cannot say anything. So it's only it's only YouTube that is um, that is uh, that's vibrant. So let's carry on. Somebody else put it here. I saw it. I, I don't have a salary, but I want to learn as much as I can. The trick is not in the salary, Brother Arnold. It's not in the salary. It's in the learning. Because once you start learning about financial independence and financial independence number, you begin to get an itch. You start telling yourself, how can I start? Yeah? And that way, you wire your mind. Yeah? And I say, we've talked about business models, I think, in, in previous, um, in previous uh, sessions. Wire your mind to create a business model where you can begin to run a business even without capital. Remember, Solomon, the richest man who ever lived, says, wisdom is worth much more than gold. Wisdom is to be desired way more than rubies. So seek wisdom. Seek wisdom. Yeah. So once you have wisdom, then you don't have to earn a salary. You can create this thing. So the beauty of learning is it makes you uncomfortable. And you stop being laid back and you begin you begin to push, okay? Billionaire, Brian Masharia. Um, I'd, answer, I'd answer that one. Oh yeah, the five income streams I mentioned are meant to come from different asset classes, such as business, real estate, paper, uh, paper assets, ETC. Fair, I think that's, that's fine, that's good. My question to you is, how much of those things do you know? Are you able to have sufficient time to devote in mastering real estate? Are you able to, to devote sufficient time in mastering uh, stocks, uh, mastering you know, different kinds of things? I do have the, the bandwidth to master all that and still have a job, still or run a business, still generate. So sometimes it might not be possible. Maybe some, some people are able to, but I, I always believe in, in, in concentration. Yeah. Even if it's not the same thing, then let them be related. But that's, that's just my view. I think different people have different ways of looking at that. But for me, how do I earn most? So I, I think I like, I like specialization. Okay. I think as we wait for things, let me just share something else here. Now, when you begin the journey to financial independence, there are some factors. I'll talk about factors that slow you down and the factors that speed up your journey. What are the things that slow you down? Number one was not having a guiding principle, not having a clear number, not having a clear strategy. The clear strategy are the four questions. Yeah, does the world need it? Could I be the best in the world at it? Do I understand its economics? Um, am I passionate about it? So Brian, as you're talking about the five different uh, income streams, ask yourself those questions about each and every one of those. So not having that clarity, because instead of, you know, a bushfire can burn a lot, but when it rains, everything rises. So in a choma, like, but nothing gets burnt. Yeah. But a laser beam just burns and it cuts. So I prefer that level of clarity. That's number one. Number two, the black tax. If you're a young person, chances are you have to help out at home. Yeah. So helping out your parents. Um, sorting out your siblings. Now, that might slow you down, but it's more psychological than real. Let me put it this way. For me, 
the fact that I knew I had my parents to help and I had siblings' fees to sort out just made me more creative. And I'm sure it made my parents' prayers even much more hyped. And I think that brought in a lot of blessings. It built the relationships with my, with my, with my, with my siblings. Because it's, it's one of those things I say, it can slow you down. But I think it makes you more creative. Because I never lacked. I never lacked money to eat. I never lacked money to, to, to invest. But it's something that you always have to think about. Now, the thing about black tax, very simple thing. Plan for it. Don't just give. Plan for it. Plan on what you're giving mom, what you're giving dad, the fees you're paying, the people you're helping, uh, the uncle. You know, once you plan for it, then it becomes part of your everyday thing. Yeah. So that can seem like it slows you down, but I think for me, from a very deep place, I think it has a blessing. Because remember, I said financial independence is having meeting that number, that once you have hit that number, you can afford to give away the rest. So I, I learned practicing how to give from a long time ago, and it has never let me down. The thing now that will not only slow you down, but stop you, is consumerism. Yeah, that, that deep, addictive notion that when I have money, I'm it's itching, and I really want to spend it and spend all of it. Consumerism will mess up. Yeah, so I'm saying, Get rid of consumerism. That's a big one. Yeah. We can talk about nothing that will slow you down. Yeah. So when you spend your money on things that you don't understand, or things that are out there, or things that are outright um, um, not logical, that can mess you up. Yeah. Uh, slows you down. So, okay. Um, the other thing that will slow you down is not finding ways to increase your income. So I always say, start wherever you are. I started at 15K, yeah? But when you have a number that is big and daunting, a, bra a, a billionaire shared that he's in 300K. I, I think I, I know Brian. I know Brian. He's a young man. And he's thinking of 300K per month of passive income. That's a lot of money. So when you're thinking of that kind of cash, you have to think of how to increase your active earnings. The amount of money you make from your salary or the amount of money you make from your business. So you need to be chop chop. So if you don't find ways to increase that, then your journey slows. Okay. So very quickly, five things that will slow you down, not having clarity, the black tax, consumerism will kill you. Dumb money moves can kill you. Not increasing um, your active income. That can really, really slow you down. Yeah. So if you want to, to move faster, I'll also give the things that are here just now, okay? Um, someone else? Okay, I like the point you said about paying yourself first and living within your income. I'm noticing that budgeting is the foundation and most important skill of money management. What are your thoughts on the importance of budgeting in the journey to financial independence? You cannot overemphasize the role of budgeting in the, in the journey to finance. You cannot, I cannot overemphasize. However, however, okay, first, without a budget, you can never get to financial independence. However, be very careful not to have a very long list of budgets. It is, it is not just the budget, it is the order of expenditure. So if you say, I will pay my rent, I will do this, I will do this, I will do this, and then I will save, and then I will invest. That never works. Because see, if you don't buy food, you, you feel hungry. So you'll be forced to buy food. If you don't pay rent, your landlord will come and chase you away. So you'll be forced. But if you don't invest, nobody's going to force you. So there's a psychological trick. Trick number one, pay yourself first. And then budget on the rest. Pay yourself first. So use the order of importance. So pay yourself first. Yeah? Then I'll talk about something else called the wage principle in a short while that comes with that, with that kind of budgeting. Yeah? So budgeting is not in the detail 
At the beginning, we started with saying, okay, Sukumawiki, this amount, this, this amount. And it was important because, I mean, my first income, I, I knew the supermarket. There was an, um, an Uchumi near the University of Nairobi. I used to live in Kino. So I would leave the university, come into that Uchumi, and I knew exactly how to go. And I think it would be about 38.50. That was my, that was the monthly shopping. I, I didn't need a list. I knew I picked this and this and this and this and this. Most majority of that, of that um, shopping were grains, yeah? Rice, ndengu, nini, 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 things that, that uh, are not perishable and we knew could keep us. So at the beginning, you might want to get details, but as you move on, it is the order. Say, I earn 100 shillings. Surely, I can live on 99 shillings. Yeah, so there's the wage principle and there's the one percent rule. I'll talk about the one percent rule and the wage uh, principle when I'm talking about methods to speed you to speed you up. Okay, um, here is my sister Chari Bongosa talking to my other sister Grace Wanjela Mcharo. Can we stop this consumerism, please? <laughs> now, these are my sisters, eh? Blood, Dabu Moja, payday in a Caribbean, na already nawashwa. <laughs> Savo, please create a 21-day no consumerism challenge for addicts in the house. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, so so uh, thank you, thank you, my dear sister. Um, uh, 21-day no consumerism challenge coming up. I already have my first two, uh, the first two people who have signed in: Chari Bongosa and uh, Grace Wanjala. Uh, Mcharo, uh, in the house. These are my sisters, Buana. They spend my myself in the family. Um, uh, my me and my sister, the one who comes after me. Very frugal. Very frugal. Tonight we are If you have not planned for it, it doesn't get out. Then follows my brother and my other sisters. Now those ones they spend liberally. But uh, thank you for that. I think that is a good one. So. Because I think consumerism is, is real, is real, um, is, is a real addiction. Okay, I stay there. Uh, hello, Bonam Charo. This is from Sally Kim. Say I have a partner who hasn't yet appreciated the value of waiting that long, 15 years, and is pro consumerism, faking it till we make it kind of lifestyle. How do you advise I handle it? <laughs> Take it till you make it, yeah? Uh, live like the Joneses, live like the Kamaus and the Johannes until you make it, fake it till you make it. You keep faking it long enough, Sally Kim, it will kill you. It will kill you. Now, one of my pastor friends, uh, this is Pastor M, you need to watch his program on Wednesday night. It's called Church for Business. Um, why do I say that? Not just because he's my friend, um, because he, he adds real value. And he has a cause called um, Couples and Money. And he talks a lot about, um, about uh, financial oneness. Um, he has not paid me to say this. I say this because I think it's, it's real. You need to have financial oneness. How can two work together if they're not agreed? Do not be unequally yoked. Yeah? In any relationship, whether boyfriend, girlfriend, or husband, wife, money is a big deal is the cause of most fights. So the best thing is start, start learning, start reading. Uh, Sally Kim, ask for less shoes. <laughs> yeah, reduce the number of shoes you're buying. Start reading the relevant books. Um, begin to change your life. Let them watch and see, and then include them in your discussion. Say, hey, this month I've been able to do this. This month I've been able to do this. Win them over, over time. Win them over, over time. Yeah, and some things take long. Um, my wife, no problem with the financial independence, um, no issues at all. She was worn over like this. Uh, optional poverty, <laughs> I've been with her for over 20, 22 years now. I am still trying to win her over to my camp of optional poverty. So some things take long, some things would happen a little faster. Okay. Um, where are we, brother? On the passive income, is that a good place to start? Oh, now I understand. That's a good place. Eh? Gerald Kirago. Now I understand it will take time to make dreams come true. That people call overnight success. Yes, uh, overnight success, it takes 20, 24 years, 25 years. It takes about a quarter of a century for overnight success to, to happen. Yeah, um, I mean, 
from the time Apple started to the time they did the iPhone, I think that was 25 years. Yeah. Manu Dibango, the great, the great jazz musician, he did an advert and I really liked it on Johnny Walker. I don't drink, I don't advocate for alcohol, but I think I really liked his story. He says, when I became a global superstar in jazz, people said I was an overnight success. The overnight success took me 24 years of practice, 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 practice. Even the young prodigy, pro, prodigies that we see, prodigy, that's the way, um, you know, Tiger Woods wins this thing when he's 20. No, 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 when did he start practicing? Started this thing at four years old. So anything great takes a long time. Okay. Um, on the passive income, on, on the passive income, somewhere I read, I have a safety net or rather an emergency fund for three to six months before an investment. Uh, question continues below. Um, this is Ngohi, okay. How do I deal with the thought of money lying around and not putting it into investment instead? The question of um, the safety net. Um, having understood, and I think this comes with, the, with trying to, you must understand yourself and your temperament. There are, there are people who are able to just have money and save it and it stays. There are those like me who um, I'm not able. I'm not able to have money seated around. Uh, money just moves. So in my mind, money either goes to fast moving consumer goods or it goes to investment, but it just doesn't stay. Yeah. So how did I deal with the safety net? So I worked at the university. That was my sort of because I knew there was a little uh, income. Um, maybe this also touches on the income streams. I worked for an architectural company at the beginning. So there's another bit of income that is coming. I worked, um, I did business. I started my architectural company when I was fairly young. Immediately I got my license. I started something on the side. Yeah. Um, and I had my wife. That was my big safety net. So for us, it was not money in the bank. Um, it was the various sources of income, the various income streams. So may maybe I'm agreeing with you, a billionaire. The various sources of income, that is what we used. And when I quit my two jobs, when I quit the university and working for the other guy and went straight into business, my wife was my safety net. Yeah? And and, and that time, of course, we were still saving with the circle. So for us, it is having income. As I grew older, I forgot about the safety net. It is just ensuring that monthly the cash is coming in. And because I'm getting rent from, I don't get rent from one big house. I get rent from very many little houses. So if this one moves out, I'll depend on this one. If this one uh, defaults, I will depend on this other one. So there's always something that is uh, that's coming in. But again, my experience is not the is not the the it's called the hard and fast rule. So see, see what works for you, all right? Um, how do you differentiate, this is Evans, how do you differentiate between business and the investment in applying the four questions? The four questions should be applied everywhere. I think those should be universal. Whether you are doing business, um, even whether you are working, even the job that you do, if you're if you employment, you really have to ask yourself, the guys who have employed me, does the world need what they're offering? If, the, if, if, if it doesn't, if the business model of your employer is wrong, your job will not last. So those things, um, even in my mind, I use them through and through. If I'm not passionate about it, I will not do it. Even like what I'm doing now. I mean, as, um, uh, Ted GT talked about um, I was his teacher, so I love teaching. I'm terrible at social media. That's why I think my guys will sort that out, but I love teaching. So do it because you're passionate. Do it because you have the skill set or you, you have the capacity to develop the skill set. Yeah, and, and again, you don't have to have the skill set. Just capacity and, 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 um, and passion to develop the skill set. Do it because you understand the economy. Do it because the world needs it. So whether it's business or, or investment, I would not, I would not differentiate. Hana Kyoko, what is the difference between an investment and speculation? <laughs> very nice, very nice question, Hana. 
Speculation is me putting in my money, then hoping that there's another guy who will come and buy that thing tomorrow. I, I don't have any long-term plan for this thing. Now, on the surface, it always looks like the more intelligent thing to do. That I put in uh, 20,000 20, shillings, pop! In a year, it is now 30,000 shillings. I put in this, in a short while, it is that. Um, ask the guys who, who bought shares. There are very many people who are complaining right now. You, uh, I bought Mumia shares. You, I bought what shares. There were this amount now. There. So those are guys who did not think long term. If I'm thinking investment, I don't have to worry about the daily fluctuations of, if I mean stocks, I don't have to worry about the daily fluctuations of, um, of the stock. Because I'm, I'm in this thing for, for the long term. If I'm in real estate, I don't have to worry about how much my units are worth. I, I don't even know how much my units are worth. It doesn't even matter. Yeah, that's why the question of, of net worth does not come in. So I'm not buying it to sell it. Yeah. Speculation is like buying a goat today to sell it tomorrow. Investment is like buying a dairy cow for the milk, not to sell the cow. It doesn't matter how many kilos that cow is. It doesn't matter how much that cow is worth. Does it produce milk? And will I have it for the long term? Again, your time horizon is also a big deal. I have eight minutes, and I'm seeing the questions are coming. I'm really happy. Um, <laughs> Evans Musomi. What's that optional poverty concept? <laughs> what is that optional poverty concept? I live, I think, I think consumerism in any form can imprison us. I think the need for things that we want to get, we want to be happy and get things that can imprison you and it can or at least me, I know it can imprison me, and it can lead me to do foolish things for the sake of getting that instant gratification. So in time, I learned to live with less. I learned to desire less. I learned to long for less and began to get my joy and my fulfillment from my capacity to control my destiny. So, um, I, 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 optional poverty is living so lean that someone will think you're poor. But I do it because I choose to. The greatest of these guys is Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, but I think he took it to another level. I mean, he let go of clothes. He let go of food. The other time he was only living on, 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 on peanuts and, 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 and lemon juice. Okay, I've not reached to that level. But I've cut down my eating to basically a meal or two a day. Yeah. So if for most people, if you miss a meal, oh, I missed a meal because I was broke. For me, I missed a meal because I chose to. So I'm happy that way because then, you know, I'm taking care of my health at this age now. I have to think about such things. So instead of buying things that I have more money, like now, coming to Savo has increased our wealth substantially. And I'll give it all away. Why? I don't need much. I need very, very little. So everything that is profit for me, I will give it all away. Why? I don't need it. Yeah, so that's for me, that is optional poverty. Steve Jobs, Warren Buffett, a lot of, a lot of these guys, Warren Buffett lives a life of optional poverty. He's probably one of the least paid CEOs in, 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 in the Fortune 500. And yet, he's one of the richest men in the world. Yeah, so it's living a simple life and getting joy from, uh, from the inside. Are we, the time is gone? Okay. Uh, before we go, I mm -hmm. like to thank you short. Okay. Uh, uh, because it's your birthday. Yes. Uh, there's somebody who wanted to say something. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> she died. Can I at least tell you guys how to speed this thing up? Yeah. To speed up their journey. I'm, I, I might just wait for your thing to, to do. Uh, let me just finish. Yeah. Okay. We have talked about how to slow down. Now, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but uh, how do you speed up your journey to financial independence? One, have clarity. Those four questions. Have clarity, have a clear number, a clear journey, and clear four questions, number one. Number two, increase your land earning capacity. Then as your salary goes up, you have to have something called the wage principle. The wage principle is where you drive a wage because 
you drive a wedge between your earnings and your expenditure. Many times people want to, as your earnings increase, your expenditure increases. Kataio, separate. People usually have a, a bottom that I cannot live a life of less than this. No, give yourself a ceiling that I cannot live a life more than this. Um, kill consumerism. Kill consumerism completely. And if you can, go for optional poverty. Beautiful way to get financial independence. Um, and then, um, oh, choose the, your company well. Choose the people you hang out with. Choose the books you read. Choose the media you consume. If you're always on websites of buy, 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 you will never make it. If you're always in the, in the, in the places where they're teaching you how to make more, that's the right place to be. All right, guys. Let me listen to the message. questions and for your uh, engagement. Um, your time. Your time. You are very blessed. Um, I want you to reach out to us criticize. And please, if you are coming to the Father, come and see our way. We are going to be attacked. Uh, you complete it with us. Come and see. So we will say things about us and defend us. And also defend us.